So we're jumping into our last session for the day. We have some other activities, but this is like one of the most important. I mean, they're all very important, but this no is pressure. very, very important. <laughs> um, you're hearing from an actual doctor, medical doctor, um, about self-care and your body and taking care of your body. I have not heard this yet. I've heard her speak before but I'm excited to get something different and new. It looks like she has a really fun activity, so we're talking about killing the superwoman complex and the importance of self-care. So this is Dr. Nicole Swiner, also known as Doc Swiner on Instagram or LinkedIn or wherever you want to look for her. That's where you'll find her as Doc Swiner. Um, but I guess let's dive into that, so enjoy. Yay! All right, everybody stand up again. <laughs> and then how do oh, I get to the, yeah, 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 all right. Okay, first activity is doing something that you may already do without even noticing it, particularly before a very important task or meeting or job interview and all that. So we did the whole meditation thing. We're nice and relaxed. Now we're going to get that power back. You ready? All right, put your arms on your way. <laughs> Spread your legs apart, hip width. Head up, chin up. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I want to feel like superwoman. What is this? It's a superwoman pose and the power pose. Yes. So evidence shows literally that by standing like this, and for men too, but you know, we're ladies here, so. Yeah. But evidence literally shows that by standing like this for one to two minutes before you walk into that meeting, that task, that exam, that difficult patient, that situation, that literally your confidence shoots up. And it's even better if you watch yourself in the mirror so you can see yourself or take a selfie or something like that. So there you go. So take that with you. All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Do you feel powerful now? I feel like a badass. Do you? Yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> and shout out to you guys, by the way, for, for putting this on. We talked a little bit about this retreat last night. The fact that this is your first, this is your inaugural event is tremendous. So give them a hand. <laughs> this is beautiful. Um, I put on an annual event in Durham um, every year that I have my third year this year. It's called New Year, New You. And it's a struggle every, every year, especially that first year was challenging. So the fact that, I mean, you look like this the first year running is great. So kudos, kudos to you guys. Um, so I am Nicole Swiner, um, and I drove down from Durham yesterday down the street. And I'm so, so happy to be here. I'm so blessed to have come into contact with these ladies. We met at the Girlfriends Pod, um, which is this very similar group of young and popping young women doing phenomenal things in Raleigh-Durham, and they had this uh, sleepover night um, kind of thing that we did, um, talking about these similar issues that we are talking about today. And so came into contact with them. I've been following them on social media since then, and I begged them to come to be <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest. I was like, I like what you guys are doing. I'm in love with your presentation, your marketing, your graphics. I'm all about self-care. So if, if you would have me, I will come. And they uh, graciously, graciously accepted. So here I am. Um, I am a full-time family doc. So my, my full-time gig is treating everyone from the cradle to the grave, family medicine. So um, I don't know, how many of you are, most of you are here in Greensboro? You live in Greensboro? Anybody in the triangle? Oh, nice, good. So if you're looking for a family, <laughs> family care, I gotta, I gotta promo that. Um, please come out, we're, uh, we're called Durham Family Medicine, very easily, we're in close to downtown Durham. So if you guys are looking for a nice full spectrum place for primary care, then uh, please uh, give us a call. Um, if you are not in the triangle and you don't already have a primary care physician, a place that you call home for your medical and mental health, and I um, advocate for everyone to do that for themselves. That's probably my biggest thing about self-care is making sure that you are um, hooked up with those professionals that can help you when you need it. And particularly for women's health, making sure that we're getting all these parts checked out and preventing cancer and all that good stuff. So. Hope, you know, won't, won't kill your brain with too much medical stuff today, but I always like to advocate for a good primary care home. So, um, so that's my day job. My side gigs include talking, um, speaking, and writing about the superwoman complex. That's kind of my niche. Um, and we all probably know a lot about what that is, but we're going to kind of talk about how to kill that, how to be 
a superwoman without trying to be superwoman all the time, okay? Because then if you end up trying to be superwoman all the time and not taking out time for meditation and refocusing and relaxation, then you end up in my office and we're talking about what prescriptions we're trying to write, right? But if we can fix a lot of this stuff at home, if we can get to the root of where our stress is coming from, then we can fix and prevent the majority of things that we have to treat from a medical standpoint. So we can, you know, prevent high blood pressure, diabetes, migraines, abnormal periods, menopausal, so we can prevent all of this stuff if we just took the time out and focused on reducing stress. So that's what I like to share and talk about with others, okay? Uh, by the way, so I have a ebook, I have some books and products uh, there on the table, but my five tips is kind of a, my five, some of them we're gonna talk about here, but if you want a copy of this free book and this presentation, if you go to superwomanebook.com, you can download your own copy of it, okay? And then I sneakily stay in touch with you. Like, yeah, I won't send you a crazy amount of emails, but it's like once a month I send you like where I'm gonna be and what stuff is going on, but uh, more importantly, you get to keep a lot of this stuff for yourself, okay? So what is self-care? Why is that such a buzzword? What is that? What does that mean to anyone? Shout out, speak up, throw your hand up. Taking time for me. Yeah. And whatever that means. Whatever that means. If that's getting my nails done, then that's what it is. Yeah. If it's me like sitting in the park by myself, then it's whatever I'm doing that makes me feel in a positive space. Excellent, excellent. <coughs> what is up? Anyone else? It's like recovery stage. Recovery stage, excellent. Mmm, <laughs> important. Yeah. Doing nothing. Yeah. That's some of my best time. <laughs> do you have fam do you have kids at home? Oh, yeah. So I have two kids. I have two wild and crazy girls who are five and seven years old. They're getting ready for a dance recital right now. But uh sitting in that car before I walk in the house is probably some of my best quiet time. <laughs> Because as soon as I walk in the door, mommy, 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 mommy. and then my husband's like, because eh. uh, he's been with them for you know a couple of hours by himself. So yeah, that quiet space, being with yourself. So whatever that means, and whatever good feeling things you do in those moments, that is of utmost importance. Okay, there's a lot of stuff out there about you know how selfish is it you know that you even uh, plan your own time and you're taking away from dealing with other people and helping them out with their problems. No, it can be life-saving, literally, literally. I love this meme, it's like, <laughs> how do we have time for all this stuff? Like, I gotta cook and be cute and take all the selfies and tweet. I'm tired, <laughs> tired, tired, but we all do it. So none of this stuff is true. It's not silly, it's, it's not basic, it's not draining, it's not unhealthy. Uh, to practice self-care is actually the opposite. If you're not doing it on a regular basis, you're killing yourself, literally, okay? So don't let anyone tell you that you're being selfish, all right? Or actually, it's okay to be selfish. <laughs> I would, I would, let's flip that. I would take that as a compliment. Say, yeah, yeah, I'm being selfish. Yeah, this is mommy's time right here. This is mommy's time so that I can be nice to you when I come back. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, okay, give mommy her space. We're gonna back away. All right, so we're going to talk about avoiding exhaustion mentally, physically, um, promoting the importance of self-care, fun and exciting ways from the most simple to the most extreme, and the methods that I personally use to balance work, family, and all this stuff, because I think a lot of us here are also either budding or actually, um, you know, current entrepreneurs and doing our own things and sharing the businesses and the passions that we have, and if you're still working a main gig and your side gig and taking care of family and... And that's a lot of stuff to juggle, so we'll talk a lot about that. Number one, and I think the, um, the hypnotherapist that was here uh, recently said, kind of alluded to this, get out of your own way. A lot of this stuff that we're doing all the time and that we feel so focused and so, I don't know, I don't know, we're putting all this pressure on ourselves. It, a lot of this comes from us. Some of it may be you know, nature versus nurture. You may have grown up in a household where you had a very strong uh, female or male presence or a tiger mom or someone who was on you. You know, you have to do this, you have to make straight A's, you have to do this, you have to help the family, 
or maybe we adopted it through school where uh, we love that reward. You know, once we made the honor roll, we wanted to make it a million times and get that award and stand in front of the, the class, et cetera. A lot of that stuff we're doing too much to ourselves. And so relax. Get out of your own way. Don't stress yourself out. There's enough external stress from the world that we don't need to put additional pressure on ourselves, okay? To look a certain way, to be a certain way, to wear the right kind of clothes and shoes, et cetera. I wish I could rock hot, high heels every day, all day in clinic. I can't. My, my feet are whack. <laughs> like, I probably will end up taking off these shoes in a minute. Like, after I finish this piece, I'm take them off and, and be, but, you know, why? Who cares? Do you, right? So let's throw out some ideas. We're, we're going to talk and, and do a little activity in a minute, but if you were going to give yourself currently a self-care grade or score from A to F, just like in elementary school. Think about it. What grade would you give yourself right now? A G. A G. Yeah. From an A to F, a G. Yeah. Why do you say a G? Because I'm just constantly going. I don't have time to care about myself. I know that sounds so mean, like toward myself. Yeah. That's kind of where you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? So A is perfect. You could teach a class on self-care. You are a self-care warrior. You could write a book about it. F, you're completely failing. And then, of course, <laughs> G, H, I, all that. You're doing even worse. But what, what score would you give yourself? I'll say a C. A C? Yeah. yeah. So you're? So I definitely practice self-care and I have self-care days. But, you know, sometimes I'm kind of juggling, um, like, how do I practice self-care but still be there for my baby? Like, kind of thing. So it's... Um, tough, but then part of for my self care is hanging out with my baby. Because, yeah. Uh, during the week, I'm working. Or yeah. And she's with our nanny, so it's like you know I'm spending the time with her when yeah. I take care of myself. That's so good. Kind of um, making my own version of self care. So self care for me doesn't mean I have to be alone. It means I can be with my family. Good. 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 I think for me, it's more about being intentional with the time that I set aside. Like, I might set aside time, but I, I also will like feel guilty about like not doing something else. That's hard. And it's like not intentional time that I'm setting aside just solely do something else, yep. you know? Yep, guilt is hard, especially mommy guilt. <laughs> so when I, you know, when you're going and taking that extra nap or when you're going and getting that massage, you know, that mommy guilt right now, while I'm here right now, Part of my brain is already thinking, oh my God, are they okay? Does daddy know what kind of outfits to put on them? Like I'm already like guilt, feeling guilty about that. But this is necessary. This is necessary. This is, this is life saving. So it's okay. Um, and I thank God that I have a partner that supports that. You know, he understands the importance of, yeah, you gotta go and do your time. You gotta go and, and be happy so you can come back and bring that happiness back home. You know, we don't wanna be miserable all the time together. Anytime. We don't ever want to be miserable together. So you want to make sure. And he, you know, I try to allow him to go out and do his thing too, whether it's just going to watch a movie by himself, playing golf, being with his friends. We all need that recoup time so that we can come back and be re energized together, right? So let's see. My self care score, and again, you know, I'm very hypocritical when I talk about this stuff because <laughs> I am a, a, a superwoman. I'm a superwoman. I mean, I have a full time job. As a family doc, um, I'm doing this writing, this speaking, this teaching on things. Full-time mom, full-time wife, you know, I, I feel like I definitely can give good advice because I'm living it. Um, but I definitely try, I make an effort, I'm being more intentional about this so that I can practice what I preach. So I say I'm, I'm about a B, I'm a B. Um, and a lot of that I credit to and I know that everybody doesn't have, you know, control over their schedules like I can or like I do. but uh, my, my eventual goal by the time that my five-year-old starts kindergarten uh, in September is to cut back to three days a week in the office, right? So if you can do that, if there's a way that you can finagle, we were talking about work at, at dinner yesterday. We were talking about what is that passion? What is that thing that you ultimately want to do? Are you doing it right now? What's preventing you from, you know, from doing that? And sometimes you may have to cut back and save up a couple of months so that you can cut back on that main gig and focus on your side gig so that that side gig can become your main gig, right? You may have to cut back on Starbucks every day to save up that $5 every day because that adds up so that you can cut back on hours. So if you can switch your, your day, your time, your schedule around, 
do it. If that means you have to cut back a little bit in the budget, so be it. You know, your happiness is worth it. Okay, and I talk to my patients about this all the time. The number one complaint is hating work, literally, literally. Why do I have headaches all the time? Why is my blood pressure up all the time? Why can't I sleep? Why? Tell me about work. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> Hello, right? <laughs> it affects you. We, uh, again, last night at dinner, we talked about we spend more time at work during the week than we do at home with our loved ones. So if that sucks, if that eight hour, eight to 10 to 14 hours a day sucks, change it, change it. It will save the amount of prescriptions and tests and procedures and all these things that we have to do in the doctor's office if we just focus on that, okay? So if you can, change it. Any questions, comments, personal stories? So get out of your own way. All right, tip number two, there's no perfect time. Okay, so I'm, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plan at least three months, I'm gonna save up on this money, and then I'll wait for her to start kindergarten, and then she has to finish school, and then there will always be something. Do it now. Just jump. Jump. Do it. <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do it. 